Have you ever dropped your phone in the toilet? No, not yet. You've never dropped your phone in the toilet? Nope. Anthony, have you? You've never dropped your phone in the toilet? Twice. I've dropped in my phone twice in the toilet. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a bummer. But it never broke. I picked it right out and it was, I just like, it still worked. Yeah. But there was like one time. You washed your hands, right? Like a lot? I don't know. <laughs> What's up, just found my pants tucked into my socks and uh, meeting my friend Amanda. She does meow mics on Instagram. Uh, really, really nice woman, smart. And so we're just gonna get coffee, probably end up talking business a little bit. Uh, did a podcast with Pat Flynn about an hour ago. And then gonna meet up with Anna Victoria after that. Gonna get coffee with her and her husband. And then uh, hang out, do some work. Work out later at night at like 10 p.m. I don't know what else, but we'll see. Good to see you. Kale, yeah. Kale, yeah. Kale, yeah. Hello, Susan Niebergall Fitness. I am delightful. How are you? Golan just texted me. I text him back. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to call him. He ignores it. And I'm thinking, okay, he must be on a call. He must be in a meeting. He goes, I'm taking a shit. Give me two minutes. Shit time is prime phone time. Bro, shit time is prime phone time. I'm calling again. Pick up. Everyone talks on the phone in the bathroom. Yo, go on. Yes, sir. You ignored the call because you were pooping? I ignored the call because I was finishing up pooping. Just washing my okay. hands right now. Okay, all right, respect. You were in the final state. That's different, okay. Yeah. We're explaining to the vlog that I was upset that you ignored me while you were pooping. I was like, that you could have just hung out and relaxed. Got it. Okay, so no, you were you were finishing up. You've spoken on the phone with me at all. It's probably been while I was pooping. Okay. Like, just in general, as I do. My mistake. Love you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you later. Bye, Anthony. Anthony literally just waved as, a, as though you could hear him. Wow. He literally just... <laughs> Alright, man. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. This is Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, this is Anna. What's up, man? So good to see so you, So good man. to see you, man. How is everything? My husband's good. How are you? How are you doing, okay. Anthony? <laughs> Very nice to meet you. So good to see okay, you. Okay, you too. Yeah. It was so good Anna, to see man. you. It was really good to see you. Good seeing you, too. Have a good rest of your trip and enjoy Boston. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Stop the video really quick. Just want to let you know, I'm going to walk you through this whole workout. I'm going to walk you through some of the coaching cues I use. I'm going to walk you through the order of the workout, why I did what I did, why it was structured the way it's structured, so you get a better idea of how you can structure your own workouts and why I did what I did. Da, 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 da. Stop talking, Jordan. Here we go into the first clip. So in this clip, what you're seeing me do is I'm telling Michelle not to bend her elbows. And this is really important in the deadlift because Number one, if you're bending your elbows, that means that first and foremost, the bar is traveling a further distance, right? So if you think about it, if your arms are fully straight and locked out, it's a shorter distance between off the ground to lock out. But if you bend your elbows, that means you have to carry the bar a further distance, which makes it harder, so you're not gonna be able to lift as much weight. Number two, and more importantly, is if you're bending your elbows, you're flexing your bicep. And any time someone has torn or strain their bicep from deadlifting, it's from bending their elbows. So what I told Mizzy was not only to keep her arms uh, straight so they don't bend, I actually said reach for the floor. It's a really important cue, it's an external cue, and I'll talk about that in a different video, but instead of only thinking about keeping them straight, actually by consciously thinking about reaching for the floor, it allowed her to take that external cue to really extend her arms as long as possible so her bicep wouldn't get torn 
and to improve the efficiency of the lift. In this clip, what you're seeing me do is I'm telling Daniel not to breathe into his chest. I'm telling him to breathe into his belly before he lifts. The reason being, actually, you can do this with me right now. What I want you to do before I tell you why, I want you to just take a big breath in right now. Do it right now. Take a big breath in. And I want you to notice if your chest rises or not. Most people, I'm assuming this happened with you because it happens with almost everyone, and they take a big breath in, their chest rises. It's a stress breath. You're using your accessory muscles for breathing, your pec minor, your scalene, sternocleidomastoid, blah, 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 fancy words that don't matter. You're using your chest muscles and your neck muscles to breathe, which is okay, it's not bad, but when you don't use your belly, your diaphragm, it's like your, sort of, your spine and back is sort of just hanging out and it's in much greater danger. When you breathe in through your belly first, it's sort of like if you have a floaty around your arm in the pool, it, allow, it stabilizes your arm. So think about your breath in your belly stabilizing your spine in the same way. So before you fill your chest up, you first want to breathe through your nose and fill your belly up, then your mouth and fill your chest up too. So belly first, chest second, and then squeeze your abs tight so you get the best brace and you keep your, your spine and your back safe throughout the whole lift. After deadlifts, we did pause squats. And so Daniel, he used a barbell because he's competing in powerlifting. I've seen him squat before. I know his technique is really good and he can do it properly. Michelle, this is my first time I saw her lift and a goblet squat is just much easier to coach and the amount of weight she was using, it was very challenging for her. So we stuck with that. Eventually we would move her to a barbell if she wanted to. Really quick, if you have hip issues when you squat, for example, as you squat down, you notice your hips pinch a little bit or they get too sore. Number one, I'm gonna make a video in the next week or two explaining how to modify your squat to make that better. Number two is I get that sometimes. So rather than squatting very often, I squat about once every 10 days. And when I'm not squatting, I'll do something like this where I do alternating reverse lunges. And this allows me to keep my hips less irritated while still squatting once in every 10 days, but not doing it so much that it really just perpetuates an issue. So if you have hip issues when you squat, you can switch to something like reverse lunges, forward lunges, Bulgarian split squats, really any single leg movement because it requires less internal rotation from your hip and it makes it a little bit easier. We supersetted the pause squats with something called reaching planks, and I'll explain why after this video in the program description. Suffice to say, they're brutal, and if you think regular planks are easy, these are not. What I want you to notice is as Daniel's reaching going forward, his torso, it might be hard to see in this angle, but his torso starts to rotate. So I say to Daniel, I was like, I want you to imagine you have a glass of wine on your back and you don't want it to spill. Reason being, if he's reaching, and his torso is rotating, he's losing the benefit of the exercise. You'll notice it gets much harder when you slowly reach forward and you don't allow your torso or core to twist. So 
So then we moved on to single leg RDLs, which is a really great single leg exercise for your glutes and your hamstrings. It's very challenging, especially balance wise when you first start. As you can see, Daniel and Mizzy, they were having some trouble with it, but they did get better over time. Um, what you'll notice is one of my favorite cues is to send your leg to the wall behind you because what people struggle with, and you saw both Daniel and Mizzy struggle with this, is they were reaching too far forward. They were reaching with the dumbbell, and when you reach with the dumbbell with your arm, that means you're not moving through your hips. This is not an exercise for your shoulder, for your arms, it's for your glutes and your hips and your hamstrings. So you actually want your arm to hang straight down, and the only reason you move is because you send your hips your butt, your leg to the wall behind you. When you focus on sending your, your leg to the wall behind you, you automatically move through your hips rather than through your upper body. Finish the workout with single leg hip thrusts, which is a really challenging exercise. Great for your glutes if you want to build a butt, and everyone should build a butt, men and women. Everyone likes a nice butt. Um, number one, you'll notice I'm touching Daniel's butt. I'm literally palpating his glutes. It's not just because he has a nice butt, it's also because when you touch a muscle, it creates a mind-muscle connection to let your mind know what muscle needs to be activating. So if you struggle to feel your glutes during either hip thrusts or glute bridges or anything, you can lightly tap them during the movement to give your brain that little extra kick to know, hey, activate this, use this. Also, I make sure that both Daniel and Michelle are using a significant range of motion. It's easy to sort of cut the range short on the way down and the way up. So I was like, if you cut the range short, we're going to start the set over. And I would have had them do that, not because I'm trying to be tough, but just because sometimes when you give your clients a little ultimatum like that, they really focus on it and they get better results. All right, so right now I'm gonna walk you through this lower body workout. Why it was designed the way it was, why it works, how you can use it, maybe how you can modify it, why I chose certain exercises. Literally break it down step by step for you. Before I do, first, I hope you enjoyed the vlog up to this point. If you don't subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Go down, hit the subscribe button, and if you want to be notified of when a video goes live, hit the bell so that you get an email when it comes in. And just so you know, I'm gonna be going through the comment section for people who comment, giving away t-shirts, tank tops, blah, blah, blah. Uh, whether you subscribe or not, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. And now, we're gonna get into the workout description. All right, so first and foremost, we're gonna look at the workout as a whole. Before we get into individual exercises, I just want you to look at the workout as a whole I don't know if it's gonna fit into this. We're gonna, Anthony's gonna edit this to make sure the workout fits wherever my hands are. Um, but if you look at the workout as a whole, number one, obviously lower body. Number two is you're gonna notice it's split into different pairings. And these pairings are called supersets. I like doing supersets because number one, you get more work in in less time. That's really the greatest benefit that I see. So for example, we have sumo deadlifts with glute bridges, right? Then we have uh, pause squats with reaching planks. And within these, usually you, you would do two exercises, now you get four exercises. And so you can get more done in less time. Important to note, you don't have to go from one exercise to the next really fast. You can take 30 seconds, a minute between, depending on your goal, maybe you wanna go really, really fast. What I do at the beginning of the, of the workout, when it's really more heavy strength based, I'll take more rest. So we'll have sumo deadlifts, or Daniel did conventional, whatever, but you have your deadlifts, which is heavy, and you do that, take a little bit of rest, 60 seconds, then you go into your glute bridges, get your glutes activated, then go back and forth 
before going on to the next pairing. So that saves a lot of time. And if you'll notice, the deadlift is obviously a very glute dominant exercise, but a lot of people struggle with activating their glutes. So I paired it with an exercise specifically to help you activate your glutes. So you have your deadlift paired with glute bridges to make sure that between sets, you keep them activated, you keep them warm, you keep the mind muscle connection. So when you go back into your deadlift, you can use your glutes better and you're less likely to get injured because sometimes when you're not using your glutes, you use your back. So it gets the benefit on all fronts there. So after deadlifts and glute bridges, moved on to pause squats and reaching planks. And first, what I wanna say is this, the reason I started with deadlifts and then went on to squats is not because you have to, but because deadlifts were the focus of the workout from the perspective of this workout is really designed for helping improve your deadlift. And you want to start with the thing that you care about most, especially from a technique perspective. If you're doing things after you're already fatigued that are very technique intensive, it's more likely to go to shit, it's harder. So start with your most technique intensive and the one that you wanna put the most effort into and then go through the rest of the workout. So starting with the deadlift, then we go to the squats. It's pause squats, again, not because it's better than regular squats, not because they're magical or they have pixie dust or fairies or rainbows, unicorns, sparkles, blah, just because it's another great variation, okay? One of the best things about exercise uh, selection is not just doing the same thing over and over and over again, but changing the stimulus slightly so that your nervous system doesn't adapt, right? Now, I will say one of the major benefits of pause squats is it forces you to get stronger out of the hole. And the hole is in the deepest part of the squat, right? And that's where most people struggle. Most people fail at either coming right out of the hole or slightly above it. So by forcing yourself to pause, this right in the weakest part of the lift, and you're allowed to get stronger in that weakest part. Because most people, what they'll do is they'll try and sort of bounce out. They'll like go speed up as, the, as it goes down or they'll cut their range of motion. And going fast in the bottom is okay if you're doing a regular squat and you have good technique, but there's something to be said for making sure that you're strengthening your weakest link because you're only as strong as your weakest link, as Louis Simmons, one of my greatest mentors said, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you can't get out of the bottom with a certain amount of weight, it doesn't matter how much you can squat halfway up because the bottom, you can't get out of the bottom. So by pausing the bottom, you can strengthen your weakest link and increase your overall squat. Also worth mentioning, by adding a pause in the bottom, you're gonna use less weight inherently. So don't try and do as much as you can in a regular squat because you won't be able to. It's also really great if you have an injury, if you're recovering, if you're trying to take a lighter week, if you just feel fatigued, by adding that pause in there, now you can not lift as much weight, not get as much mental stress and as much emotional stress, physical stress, and still get the great benefits because it's still gonna be very challenging, all right? We paired this with a reaching plank. And if you haven't tried it yet, again, give this a shot. I really like reaching planks because it forces you to resist the rotation. Planks in general, just a regular plank, it, it, the benefit comes from resisting what's called extension, right? So a plank is an anti-extension movement, which basically just means that you don't want this to happen and you force yourself to stay here strong through the core. What the reach does is it adds an anti-rotation component to it. So now you're not only resisting this, you're also resisting this. And when you add both components into your lift, it makes for a hell of an of a exercise. And if you didn't see in the uh, workout description, I told Daniel to imagine that he had a glass of wine on his back. Go watch that if you didn't already. Go back in the video, see where I said, make sure you imagine you have a glass of wine on your back because I explain why that cue helps you resist the rotation and use more core muscles. So that's the second pairing. And then in the third pairing, the final pairing of the day, we have single leg Romanian deadlifts and single leg hip thrusts. Now, single leg Romanian deadlifts are a tremendous, tremendous exercise for your glutes, your hamstrings, overall proprioception, kinesthetic awareness, fancy words for saying like your balance, where you are in space, it's really athletic. Um, and it'll blow the hell out of your ass in a good way, that's a good thing. Um, what I want you to know, notice here is if you are struggling like Daniel and Michelle were at the beginning, if you watch the workout, they got better as time went on. So the first time you try it, it might be difficult. And the second time, it might also be difficult. Keep trying, don't stop. I will say one of the best ways to improve your balance in this exercise is to number one, look at the floor about 10 feet in front of you. Just keep your eyes focused on one spot on the floor, don't move. 
right? That's gonna help. Number two, squeeze whatever you're holding very tight. If you're loose, sometimes it's, it's easier to fall all over the place. When you squeeze your fist really tight, it helps improve your balance. And number three, and this one seems counterintuitive, a lot of people will try this exercise and use very lightweight, like two pounds or six pounds, and it actually, it's counterintuitive, but it makes it harder. Because when you use a little bit heavier weight, it acts as a counterbalance, and it helps you balance better. Not to say go up to 100 pounds, but don't use, don't use unless your pink dumbbells go up to like uh, to 20, 30, 40, 50, don't use the pink dumbbells. Start, I would say anybody should be able to start with at least 20 pounds, all right? Um, as for the, literally, I mean, anybody can start with 20 pounds. I mean it. It's not just, that's, I know it's generalization, but I've worked with thousands of people. Anybody can start with at least 20 pounds, seriously. Um, then we went into the single leg hip thrust, and I love this pairing between the single leg RDL and the single leg hip thrust because especially if you want your glutes to blow up and like get more glute definition and glute shape, this is gonna completely blow your ass on fire. I don't know if, Dan, if, uh, if uh, Anthony got any shots of this, but their asses were burning. Um, if you wanna overlay shots of them being like, oh my God, like put them in. I don't know if you got them, Anthony. Um, but really good for glutes and also very good for deadlifts. Keeping in mind, this workout was really designed to help improve your deadlift. So number one, you have the first movement, which is a single leg RDL, which is essentially, it's a single leg Romanian deadlift. It's a deadlift variation. You're getting your glutes and your hamstrings and your erectors through that hip hinge movement standing up. So you get that. And then when you go onto the single leg hip thrust, it's less hamstring and much more just glute focused. Again, because the glutes are so overlooked and people know that they should train them, but a lot of people aren't training them enough. And I like this exercise specifically because it helps work out the extension, the top portion of your deadlift when you lock it out and it just gets your mind really connected with your glutes to feel them better. And the more you can feel your glutes and control them, the less likely you are to hurt yourself and the stronger your deadlift is gonna be, all right? If you have any questions about this workout, please leave them below. Again, if you enjoyed the vlog, subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified, and I will be giving out prizes to people who comment in the comment section, free t-shirts, tank tops, coffee from Unicorn Magic Coffee, calls with me, consults, a whole bunch of free months in the inner circle. Um, that's it, I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, leave them below. Have a good day.